hell Forever existing in worlds above Now offered and given to all Oh, fountain of beauty eternal The Father, the Spirit, the Son Sufficient and endlessly generous Magnificent, marvelous light
Morning and welcome to Hope Hall's Father's Day service. Morning, welcome to Father's Day. I am an older dad. My kids turned out not bad. When they were boys, we played with their toys. What fun we always had! Welcome to Father's Day. Good morning. Happy Father's Day. Hey, good morning, church. Happy Father's Day. It's great to have you here with us live on Facebook, live on YouTube, however you're accessing this service. I wonder if you could drop a few comments below. How are you watching it? Is it on your tablet, on your phone? Have you got it on your, your TV, on your screen? What does it look like? 
Have you managed to come out of your pyjamas this morning? Are you with your, your loved ones around you? Are you watching on separate devices? What does it look like for you? We are in for an incredible service today. We're going to be looking at, at God's heart for us. And this Father's Day, it's incredible for us to honour and celebrate the men in our lives that have made such an incredible difference. So to you dads out there, we want to thank you for all that you've poured into us. I love what it says in Psalm 78 when it talks about how the next generation would remember their mighty acts of what the Lord has done because we did not neglect to show it, to tell it and to share it with the next generation. So how blessed are we to have incredible men of God in our world that do that for us. We're going to enter into praise and worship in a moment. So Lord, we just invite you right now into our midst, into our homes, into our circumstances. And as we get ready today, Lord, to worship, as we get ready for communion later, as we get our bread, as we get our way, Lord, as we prepare our hearts, we just invite your Holy Spirit to be here with us today. Lord, we don't just see this as another church service. We don't see this as another online gathering on week 427 of lockdown or however far in we are. But Lord, this is an opportunity for us to engage with the King of Kings, with the Lord of Lords, Lord. And we just invite you into our homes, into our minds, into our hearts, into our lives afresh today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Who the power of sin and darkness, whose love is mighty and so much stronger than King of glory, than King of love for me. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder, who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder.
Good morning everyone. If your dad sitting next to you, don't forget to give him a big hug. I've been thinking about my dad this morning and unfortunately I can't give him a hug because he is quite far away from here. And if you can give a hug to your dad for some different reasons, I've got something to tell you. You know what? We have an amazing God and he is our heavenly father and he hugs us with love and care every single day. Even more, since you've been born, he prepared for you lots of amazing gifts. Do you like receive a presents? Hmm, can I ask you about something? Can you keep eye on those two? Something tells me they love receive the presents and my present might disappear at some point. So, one of the most beautiful gifts that God prepared for you is music. La 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 la. Where is the noise coming from? What are you doing? We are singing. Singing? Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, that's a good try. So there are so many amazing facts about music. Music helps us feel happy when we sad, and music helps us remember, or even music helps us with the languages. Music simply is such an important part of our life. And I'm not surprised that one of the longest books in the Bible, the books of songs, is called Psalms. And you know what? When we use music to worship our God, our music becomes very powerful, so powerful that it can break the wall of anger, wall of sadness, wall of loneliness. It even can break real walls, made with the huge stones. Don't you believe me? Let's see what happened in one place called Jericho. In the Old Testament, God chose a great place for his people to live, but long story short, they ended up in Egypt for 400 years. And remember, from our previous story, Moses led God's people out of Egypt back to the land God has promised to give them. But there was a problem. Other people moved in while God's people were gone. God picked Joshua to be a leader of Israel. He watched Moses lead God's people for years, so Joshua learned to go when God said go and stay when God says stay. Joshua got really good at obeying God in the little things and in the big things. God gave Joshua very specific directions on how to defeat the people who were living in God's promised land. It wasn't a normal kind of battle plan at all. But Joshua trusted God so much that he was ready to obey no matter what God asked. The first city they came to was Jericho. Jericho had a big tall wall that protected the city. God told Joshua to line up all of God's people and march around the city once a day for six days. Then, on the seventh day, they were to march around the city seven times, no fighting, no yelling, just marching. So Joshua did everything that God said. He led all of the people to line up and obey God too. Even so, this plan sounded a little bit crazy, and even so, the wall of the city were big and tall. Joshua obeyed what God told him to do. On the first day, they marched around the city's big, tall wall, no fighting, no shouting, just marching. On the second day, they marched around the city's big, tall wall, no fighting, no shouting, just marching. On the third day, they marched around the city's big, tall wall, no fighting, no shouting, just marching. You get the picture, right? Same thing on the fourth day, and the fifth day, and the sixth day. It seems like nothing has happening. Jericho's big, tall wall was still big and tall. On the seventh day, God told Joshua to march around the city seven times. This time, they blow the trumpets and shouted. And guess what they saw? A big tall wall fall. It was a miracle. 
because of Joshua's great obedience to God's instructions, and God destroyed the big tall wall of Jericho. Joshua continued to obey God and the little things and the big things. He trusted God no matter what. Well, since you've been so good and you've been listening to stories so well, you can take this lesson. It's for you guys. Do you remember what I said earlier on that music helps remember and makes our memory better? So let's see how that works in real life. So the story for today is from Second Chronicles and chapter 16 and verse 9. And instead of saying that verse, let let you some music and sing that verse instead. Are you ready guys? Okay, let's do it. Sing to God, sing His praises. Sing to God, sing His praises. Tell everyone about His wonderful work. Start tapping, our hands started clapping, our bodies started dancing before the Lord. Our feet start tapping, our hands started clapping, our bodies started dancing before the Lord. Come on and dance with joy in your heart. Come on and dance with joy in your heart. Come on and dance with joy in your heart. Everybody dancing for the Lord. Started dancing before the Lord. Our feet started tapping, our hands started clapping, our bodies started dancing before the Lord. Yeah, come on and dance with joy in your heart. Come on and dance with joy in your heart. Come on and dance with joy in your heart. Everybody dancing for the Lord. When I feel sad. That makes me glad When I feel low It's your love, it's your love It's your love that helps me grow When I feel sad It's you that makes me glad it's your love, it's your love, it's your love that helps me grow Come on and dance with joy in your heart Come on and dance with joy in your heart Come on and dance with joy in your heart Everybody dancing for the Lord going to have some conversation now with some of the dads and the lads from church and the first question I'm going to ask to Ben and that is what is the the daftest thing or the most dangerous thing that you've ever done with you and your dad? Well I think the daftest thing was probably um, in Austria when we probably finished um, skiing for the day but we thought ah, it's a good idea we'll go up and have another run uh -huh. but um, the clouds had dropped and basically for the full time of our scheme we couldn't see a thing except from the lights on the on the chair left. <laughs> David, have you got anything that you've ever said to, to the boys now? Whatever you do, don't don't tell your don't tell your mum about this. <laughs> um, not really actually because no. <clears throat> most of the stuff we do, Morag will just understand <laughs> that's where we are anyway. Um, okay. probably the probably the one about skiing. And maybe going surfing uh, in a thunder and lightning storm was probably one that that was the closest we got to saying to Ben, don't tell your right. mom. Can you think of something that your dad can do that, that you that you can't do that you would like to be able to do? I would quite like to try and win surf. Okay. If, boys, if you were to describe your dad to somebody 
who had never met him before. Mm. How, mm. how would you describe him? To I'd some... say he's very funny, and I'd, I'd just say he's very gallus. <laughs> funny and gallus. <laughs> <laughs> how would you, David, how would you describe your boys? They're both very different, but both share some similar qualities. Um, Ben's Captain Sensible. Um, he is very dependable, <laughs> uh, very resourceful. Um, you flip the coin and go to the reverse of all of those, and you have Sam, who's like uh, a Tasmanian devil and <laughs> his life upside down. Interesting, yeah. Leon, how about Mason? How would you describe Mason to someone? Oh, he's a superstar. You know? A superstar? Yep, but... My goodness me, at times he does not shut up, man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, we can all agree with that. <laughs> um, have you ever had conversation together about about God, about faith, about Christianity and such like? And uh, is there anything you remember from, from that kind of conversation? Ben? One that stands out is the, the night I became a Christian. Um, and I just remember sitting in bed and... I think I'd done my Bible reading notes that night. Yeah. It was really good on Sunday one year. And um, I just remember saying I want to do it. And cool. Yeah. Cool. Excellent. What about you, mate? Of? I'd say we sometimes do it. And I'd say the best times we do it and the most times we do it is when I'm in my bed, just going to bed. But also, see, when I've got asked to do something for kids' church to be on the online service and I'm looking in the Bible for like a verse to do um, it's that too Cool, what about you Sam? I remember talking to Jesus when he said to me come on you've got to become a Christian you've got to become, so then I just decided why not Cool, fantastic and uh, dads, when you look at your boys and uh, put your prediction hats on as, as they're going, growing up and get into the future. What Any ideas to what you think they might become? Any any thoughts, David? It's probably a bit easier to think about Ben because he's gone through school now and he's beginning to pick subjects. So I think he's shown a real interest in sport and sports um, sports science. Um, yeah. So it'll be interesting to see. I can really see him being, you know, prescribing exercise programmes and doing sports science studies. Um, he, he's got that kind of manner with him. Uh, as for Sam, um, probably a job in the circus, probably <laughs> just about <right. laughs> so he's always he's always bouncing about, swinging about. Whatever whatever Sam does, it will need to involve energy because he's got energy coming out of his ears. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Leon? Any ideas what Mason might do? Well. There's there's been a few things, but I think he, I think he's going to be in the sky somewhere. He's going to be flying something, whether it's a plane or a helicopter or a. Yeah, but I think he's going to be. That's that's where it always comes back to. It's going to be an interesting journey for him. Watch this space, then. Right, one last question then to the boys, um, and that is: if you could change one thing about your dad, what would you change? I would definitely make him less embarrassing. <laughs> Sam, what would you? I would change his annoyingness. <laughs> his annoyingness. Mason, is there anything you would change about your dad? I want him to be famous. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes, you'd want him to be famous. So, Leon, I, come on. I, I think I did well out of that, Dave, David. You're <laughs> annoyingness <laughs> embarrassing. I, I got famous. Oh. So we've got an annoying dad and a famous dad. There we are. <laughs> well, listen, dads and lads, thank you very much for chatting with me. Um, that's been very illuminating, and uh, I'm sure this will help to make you more famous, Leon, as this goes out online. <laughs> 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 okay, boys. Okay, dads. Bye for now, everybody. Bye. Bye. Dad. Bye. 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 Is built on nothing less 
than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, Weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide His face, I rest on His unchanging grace in every high and stormy gale my anchor holds within the fear my anchor holds within the fear Christ alone cornerstone made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. trumpet sound Oh may I let in him be found Dressed in his righteousness alone Faultless to stand before the throne Christ alone Cornerstone Weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong. In the Savior's love, through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all.
Hi there and happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. Of course this is the day for weird and wonderful presents from our children and I've had my share over the years although one year I did get a Rubik's Cube which was a brilliant present for me as a boy growing up in the 1980s. I remember them the first time round of course. Not that I can still do it but anyway great presents so happy Father's Day. And today of course we're speaking about fathers about dads um, which is a message not just for all the dads out there, but for everybody. And my title for this morning is that good fathers are made by a good God. Good fathers are made by a good God. There's three things I want to say. First of all, the world needs good fathers, and I'm sure you can agree with that. Secondly, the world is lacking good fathers, and maybe you would agree with that as well. And thirdly, that good fathers are made by a good God. So firstly, the world needs good fathers. You know, all life, um, every person, every living creature, every animal has a mother and a father. We have all been born to a mother and a father. And that family unit of mother and father and children is how God has made life to be. It's God's ideal for life. We understand, of course, today that that's not the case for all of us. There are many of us who have um, homes where there's not a mother or a father or the children aren't there or whatever. But the ideal is for mothers and fathers and children to be together so that the children can be raised in that loving environment to be able to go on to become mothers and fathers themselves. And Genesis 1 and 2 sets that out as the foundation of human existence. Now it's important to say that fathers and mothers are different. God made men and he made women and he made them to be different. And so fathers and mothers are different. A father's not a mother and a mother's not a father. A man is not a woman, a woman is not a man. The grass is not the sky and the sky is not the grass. There are different functions, different roles, different purposes for men and women, for fathers and mothers. And of course, today in our society, there's a great push for gender fluidity to see gender as not being something basic or fundamental, but being something that is a choice that we choose, which is not the way that it's described in the Bible. And that men and women are being pushed to to be the same as each other in many ways. And that's not good or healthy because, again, that is not how God has made life to be. God has made men and women to be different. And we bless the differences that there are between men and women, between fathers and mothers. So if you are a man, be a man. If you're a woman, be a woman. If you're a dad, be a dad. And if you're a mother, be a mother. Don't try to be the other one because it just doesn't work. So fathers have particular roles and in the scriptures uh, there are many scriptures that are addressed to fathers on their own. In 1 John 2, uh, John writes and he says, to you fathers I write and he goes on to say some stuff particularly to dads. In Luke chapter 1 verse 17 it says, and Jesus will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children. Now why does he say that? He says that because There is a problem and there is a problem in our society even today, not just in Jesus' day, but today. And that is there is a disconnection between fathers and their children very, very often. Good fathers connect with their children. But unfortunately, there is much disconnection, sometimes quite literally, where fathers are no longer involved in the family, where they are somewhere else altogether, or they see their children every now and again, or if they even do see their children or they are in their family, there's not a connection between the father and the children. Not much talking goes on, more shouting or problems always seem to surround the relationship between fathers and their children. And that's something which causes so many problems and so many issues in the lives of children growing up and which unfortunately they in turn then can pass on to their children. So Jesus came One of the reasons Jesus came was to turn the hearts of fathers back to their children. In other words, to make those connections once again. And if you're facing in your family disconnect between father and children, then you pray to Jesus because he is there to help make those connections strong again. So number one, God, good fathers connect with their children. Number two, good fathers provide for their children. In uh, Luke chapter 11, verses 11 and on, it says, Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? 
good fathers provide for their children. Of course, years ago it used to be that the man was the only breadwinner, as it was called, in the home. And uh, it was traditional for the man to go out and work if he could get a job and for the woman to stay at home and to look after the children. Of course, that's changed over the years and both men and women often seek to work if they can and get jobs and, and often need to try and work and get jobs to make ends meet. But there is a role here for men which God has placed in the hearts of men to provide for their children. And not just to provide financially, but in many other ways as well, to provide time for children. Good fathers give time to their children, time to play, time to have fun, time to ask questions. We were just talking to one of the dads here, it might be on the service today, about um, interesting times that you had together with conversations. And one of, one of the boys was saying how he remembered just at night time speaking to his dad about stuff, about God and all kinds of things to do with life. Those are absolutely invaluable times where fathers are good fathers are providing for their children, a listening ear, providing advice, providing confidence, providing in lots of different ways. So good fathers connect with their children, good fathers provide for their children and good fathers discipline their children. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 9 says, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us and we respected them for it. Although I'd also put in brackets, maybe not always, <laughs> but maybe later we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the father of our spirits and live? Our fathers disciplined us for a little while as they thought best and, always, and often uh, didn't always get it right, but as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good that we may share in his holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. We all need discipline. And fathers have a key role in disciplining their children. They do it as they think best. They don't always get it right. It's not always enjoyable at the time. It's, it's painful at the time. There's not always respect from the children at the time, I don't think, but later on, there will be respect and there will be peace in somebody's life because they have been disciplined when they were younger. There will be righteousness, there will be good choices made in somebody's life as they grow up because they have been disciplined as they have grown up. And fathers have a key role in doing that. And when fathers abdicate discipline, then we end up with children going their own way, doing their own thing and all kinds of problems taking place. So, good fathers connect, good fathers provide and good fathers discipline. And the world needs good fathers. Secondly, the world is lacking good fathers. The very fact that we live in a disconnected society where there is so much disconnect in all kinds of different ways, one of the reasons for that is because fathers are not doing their job, and um, that's myself included. We are not helping to connect with our children and helping our children to connect with others. And so we end up with a disconnected society. And then we can also see that there are many families where there is not the provision there that there should be. Many people not being provided for um, in material ways, Many people not having fathers there to give that listening ear, to give that good advice. And so we have families where there is a lack of provision and that causes real problems. And then we have individuals who are undisciplined, where the fathers are not exercising discipline. And it's not all down to dads. Um, so don't be uh, condemned by, by what I'm saying. But dads have a key role in this discipline and so many Young people are undisciplined because they haven't had that fatherly discipline in their life. I used to work as a youth worker in the YMC and I can tell you that every single young person I spoke to, especially the boys who were off the rails, did not have a good father. So that cannot be coincidence. So fathers are so needed not just for their individual children, but for families and for society, which is built on 
families. So many fathers today are missing and they are struggling. And it's not easy to be a good father. I know. Why? Why are fathers struggling so much? Well, two reasons. First, external pressures. And secondly, internal pressures. External pressures. In society today, there are so many pressures coming from society upon fathers that make it difficult to be a good dad. There are economic pressures, the pressure for fathers to be out working more and more and more. There are um, pressures um, from the society being a very uh, anti-authoritarian society where there is no respect for authority in any way. And so fathers suffer from that as well. Um, so children are not listening to fathers, paying them the respect that they are due. There is the whole lads culture um, which has permeated our society where uh, dads don't spend the time with their families but are away out spending time with their pals. There's all the pressures from um, feminism and gender equality issues um, which are trying to make it seem as though men and women are the same and we are not the same. Now it's quite right that women should be treated in the same way as men are. There should be equality in pay. Um, men and women are equal in value and they are equally loved by God but they have different roles in society and there are different roles in the family and God wants those roles to be kept different because that's the way he has made life to be. But there is this push to be the same and men are struggling with that. So external pressures but there's also these internal pressures as well that come from gender confusion Men not knowing what it is to be a man. Men being confused about their role within the, within the home. A lack of confidence that men are having in themselves. The male ego, which is often joked about, but it basically just means that ego is Latin for I am. It's, it's, it's who you are, who a man is in himself. Very often men are struggling with that. And that comes out then, that frustration, that struggle internally comes out externally, often in very harmful ways. It can come out in violence and aggression and frustration from men, terrible abuse. And it's, it's just horrendous to hear about the domestic abuse increase during lockdown. Terrible. But that's coming out of a man because of the internal struggle that he is having. And then it can sometimes come out in the opposite way, in, in depression, in withdrawal, in with, withdrawing from relationships. Men going into their caves or their sheds or their, the pub or wherever it is they go to get away. So the world is lacking good fathers. But there is hope and the hope comes from God. Psalm 68 verse 5 says that God is a father to the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy dwelling. God is a father. He is the one we look to for help as a father. I look to God as my father to help me be a father. He's also there as a father to the fatherless. If you are children or you have children in your family who have no father, then the help comes from God. God comes to be that father to, to the children. He comes to bring other males into the family to help raise those children to help show children what a good father is and he is a help to the he is a defender of the widows of widows of divorcees all these wonderful single mums who are struggling so hard to do their very best to bring their children up without a father or a father who's here or there or in or out but god was there to help you he is there to help you he is there to be your husband and to be a father to your children so the world needs good fathers. The world is lacking good fathers. But finally, good fathers are made by a good God. God is our role model. He is our role model which we need. And fathers often struggle to be good fathers because they have no good role model within their world. But God is the perfect father. He's the one that we can look to. And God is the one who connects he is the one who brings connection. Romans chapter 8, verse 15. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. God connects us through Jesus with himself as a father so that we can cry, Abba, Daddy, 
Father and have that close relationship. That connection comes through believing in the Lord Jesus that he died on the cross for your sins and if you will ask him to forgive you, he will. And he will re-establish that connection that you've lost with God as your father once again. So God is a good God and he connects with us and he helps us fathers to connect with our children. He also provides for us in James chapter 1 and verse 17 it says this, every good and perfect gift comes from the father of the heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows. He is a good God who gives us all that we need. And finally, he is the one who disciplines us. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 7, endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as sons. God connects us. God provides for us. God disciplines us as a good father. And he helps us fathers to be better fathers. The world needs good fathers. The world is lacking good fathers. But good fathers are made by a good God. And God is there to help us to re-establish fatherhood in our lives once again as we need. God bless you. Speak to you again soon. Believe in
great word today. I hope that that's impacted your life. I hope it's going to sharpen your thinking. It's going to enlarge your world. You know, we're going to take a few moments just now to uh, come round the the Lord's table, as it's called. Essentially, we're going to have communion. We're going to have a, a piece of bread and some juice or some water or whatever you have at home. And we're going to take it to remember Jesus' death on the cross and the importance that that has in our lives as Christians. You know, in the Bible, there's there's multiple covenants that the Lord makes. There's the uh, the the covenant He makes with Noah, never to flood the earth again. Covenants with Moses, covenants with with David, and ultimately the covenant that that we connect with is the covenant of Jesus Christ. That whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That is what you and I share in together. So as you're getting ready with your bread and with your your juice or with your water or whatever you take to symbolize Jesus' blood, let me just share a few thoughts from the famous verse that you'll know from 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 11. And we're going to read from verse 23. And this is from the Passion Translation. It says, For I have handed down to you what came to me by direct revelation. The same night in which he, that's Jesus, was handed over, he took the bread and he gave thanks. He distributed it to the disciples and said, take it and eat your fill. It is my body which was given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So we don't take communion to to have like a, a ritual or to have like a religious ceremony. We take communion to remember Jesus Christ, the author, the perfecter, the finisher of our faith. He is the one who saved us from our past and redeemed us for an incredible future and ultimately into an inheritance in heaven with him. It goes on to say that he did the same with the cup of wine after supper. He said, this cup seals the new covenant. That's what I talked about before, that new covenant with my blood. Drink it and whenever you drink this, do it to remember me. If you haven't already got your bread and your wine, hit pause just now. And come back to what we're about to do in a moment. Verse 26 says, Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are retelling the story, proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes. Another translation says this. He says that do not let familiarity breed contempt. You know, for me, communion was a thing that the super holy and the elite and the pastors and those who were in the worship team and raised their hands during worship and said the best prayers. It was those people that took part in communion. But we sometimes elevate uh, things of stature, external circumstances, external voices and prayers and behaviours as being more important than that of the inward heart. I love what it says when, when the prophet Samuel is looking for the next king after Saul had, had disobeyed what God had wanted for him. He says this, he says that man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And I wonder today if you come into communion with a good heart to connect with God, because that's what communion is. It's community and union together. It's an exchange of intimate thoughts. And I wonder if the Lord wants to impart something into your life, into your world today through communion, for you to remember all the great things that he's done for you, for you to remember the great things that are going on in your life, for you to remember the salvation that took you from a place of of death, a place of frustration, a place of heartbreak, ultimately into a place of fulfillment in your life. Because we know that God has great plans for your life. So just for a moment, we're going to take the bread. We're going to take the juice. I've just got some fresh juice here in a cup. And we're going to pray together and believe for the Holy Spirit to minister into your life. Because if we don't remember Jesus coming and living and dying and ultimately being resurrected and ascending to heaven. Without that, there is no salvation for us. There is no Holy Spirit to minister to us every single day. We wouldn't have much of the the New Testament and all the things that come along with that, the life, the wisdom, the correction and direction that it brings. So Lord, for these next few moments, Lord, as I take this bread, Lord, I remember your body, that sacrifice that you made for me, Lord, and I remember your blood. 
Lord, for these next few moments, I declare that you will be speaking to people in their homes right now, wherever they are, in their kitchen, in their lounge, in their living room. In Jesus' name. You know, we can have Christ with us daily. We can take communion. We can have communion with the Lord, community with him every single day. That is my prayer for you. If you do not know Jesus, I'd ask you to comment, to email, to post something and ask who is Jesus and how can I connect with him? The Lord bless you, church. so much for joining us today for streaming in in your living room and your kitchen and your pjs and your shorts and your t-shirt with your kids alone i don't know what it's looked like maybe drop a few comments below and just connect a little bit with someone but we're so thankful that you streamed in we realize that your world is busy that you still have a lot going on trying to acclimatize to lockdown and homeschooling and working from home and spending three hours at tesco rather than 35 minutes and all these different things that are going on so the fact that you've carved out space to be with god's people to enhance your faith to be prayed with to have communion to have fellowship it means a lot. So I just want to thank you. I pray that you have a great week. I pray that whatever you have going on, that the Lord is there with you. I pray that your faith goes to another level. And I pray that your devotional life, your time one-on-one -on -one with the Lord becomes the biggest priority that you have in your world. Because we know that when we walk alongside Jesus Christ, when we inquire of the Lord, when we lean of the Lord, that our faith increases and the Lord can use us to influence more things and more people. May the Lord bless you. Have a great week.